All right, so in Indian astrology, in Vedic astrology, we have some unique unique things going on where we have the uh, upayas or the remedial measures, you know? There are there are remedies, there are actions you can take. There are corrective actions that you can take based on your birth chart. You can try to uh, do things differently in your life to make your life better, right? Super simple, common sense. Um, and you know, they've said, some Vedic astrologers have criticized Western astrology for saying like that they don't have any remedial measures. You know, when they tell you what's wrong in your chart, they're just like, good luck with that. But that's not exactly true because um, you know, just like psychological counseling is a remedy, is a great remedy, one of the best ones, and they're doing that. And then also in the older forms of Western astrology, there was actually a lot of these same practices where you would, you know, say you had a rough Venus in your chart and you couldn't get married. They would, you know, give you a little talisman that represented Venus, you know, and you would do, you know, mantras or prayers in your language and your culture to that. Um, and a lot of European tradition is involved in that. And then there's, <clears throat> you know, like the Gypsies and the Romani people and all these who have still, you know, been carrying on those traditions. And they were actually evidently from India in ancient times and were expelled, you know, and had to wander. Um, and as a result spread a lot of Hindu culture, a lot of uh, Vedic astrology, a lot of other these unique be beliefs to other cultures. So while I say this, uh, I don't, you know, a lot of the people that are into Vedic astrology are coming from a yoga background. You know, you're uh, someone who's been involved in yoga or you're a Hindu. You know, that's pretty much the main people up until just recently, just like the last couple years with YouTube uh, and other internet's ways, you know, Vedic astrology has spread more. But until that time, it was pretty much just, you know, like people that ha are either Hindu or have gotten into the yoga world somehow. <clears throat> so these mantras and all... And all this stuff's coming from, you know, Hinduism as a whole. And, you know, I'm, in, I'm involved in that and stuff. And I was initiated into a Kriya Yoga tradition like over a decade ago. And, you know, I've experimented with a lot of the stuff. And I kind of, you know, I see myself as sort of like a, I guess like a Hindu in a sense, but more of like a Taoist type naturalist. Um, with with this stuff, like these are things you can practice. You, I'm not saying you have to be a part of a religion or join a sect or anything, but maybe that is good for you, and maybe that's a remedy shown in your chart. You know, uh, religions, you know, something that can really help some people in their chart and really not. You know, and that's the beauty of getting a reading and you know seeing your chart is seeing. Okay, the good advice is good advice, but what's the right advice for this person at this time in their life? Okay, so with that, we will talk about these mantras. Now, um, starting with the sun, <clears throat> the sun is, well, before I say this, all the planets are gods themselves. So the planets, the grahas themselves are seen as, as divine, they're seen as God, they're seen as aspects of God. And so you can always just honor them, worship them, stare, observe them, um, you know, offer prayers, whatever you want, do rituals to the planets. You can do that. And that's essentially what a lot of all pagan traditions have been since time began. Um, that might seem weird to a lot of people with a Western Judeo-Christian background, but I don't know. To me, I thought it was really, refre I always kind of innately knew that God was everything and not just one absolute point that God was in everything God was everything so when I learned about that point in Hinduism that you were allowed to just worship God as everything God is in the tree God is in the river God is in the Tulsi flower God is in that lizard God is in the rain falling like that to me was incredibly liberating but if it's not then you don't have to believe that um, so starting with the Sun again you can worship any planet as God as an aspect of God but if you want, if you're particularly into the sun, you can also, and you want to strengthen the sun in your chart, you want to be more consistent, you know, you want to stand up straight, you want to be responsible, have healthy divine masculine qualities about you, deal with confrontation uh, efficiently, then you could do the Gayatri mantra. That's one classic, you know, mantra that's sort of related to the sun. Um, the sun is Shiva. The sun is also related to Surya which is just the name of the sun, you know? So the sun as a deity is Surya. 
And then um, Agni, of course, like the fire, the, the god of fire. So those are like the three uh, most common deities related to the sun. So you can do the Gayatri Mantra. I've had great experience with that. I did a 40-day practice of the Gayatri Mantra when I was much younger and first got initiated into yogic paths, and it was a wonderful experience for me. So I'd highly recommend doing that. When you do any kind of mantra practice, there's more than one way to do it, but typically the most common way, what I would suggest, what I've always been taught, and what I've done, you do 40 days of that mantra, and you do it 108 times a day. And by the 40th day, you've gone through a whole moon cycle and more, it becomes kind of a part of you, you know, and, and you'll start to, you'll have seen benefits in those 40 days, you will. Um, it's really profound. And then, you know, you do it on like a mala bead, you know, like the Rudraksha or rose, Rosary if you're from a Christian background. And there's always 108, even on the Catholic Rosary and on the Hindu mala. And we know why that is, because it's 9 times 12. There's 9 grahas and 12 signs, and that's how your karma is all caught up in that string of 108. 108 is 9 times 12. And that final bead represents, you know, self-realization and being free from karma. Um, so, you know, even in the mala beads, we have a map of the planets, the sun and moon and everything. Um, <clears throat> You can also, for the sun, you can do the, you know, Om Namah Shivaya, the classic mantra of the sun or other Shiva mantras you can do. You can do like the classic Shiva pujas and things like that. Um, you know, like Agore, Bio, you know, all that one, that whole long one. Um, that's a really good one I like. Um, Sri Ram, Jai Ram, you know, the uh, Ram is the avatar. He's also related to Vishnu, so you can also honor Ram if you're into Mercury and Vishnu. But Ram is the solar avatar of Vishnu, so he can strengthen your solar energy. So uh, one of the first chants I was ever taught was in a yoga, Kriya Yoga uh, retreat, and they taught us the, um, you know, Sri Ram, Jai Ram, like, Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Om. Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Om. I'm not a great singer, but, you know, that one was really fun to do. Um, then with the moon, you can, for the moon, you can, the moon is related to, like, the goddess, just across the board in many cultures. The moon's related to water i think ambu apa these are there's a lot of different like deified water aspects throughout Hindu, hinduism those would all relate to the moon um you know uh like the goddess has different names but like parvati gauri the consort of shiva the son is shiva so the consort would be um you know sati one of these names of you know shiva's wife one of the many incarnations um saraswati also is related to the moon uh varuna is an ancient one that's really cool that's related to the moon um, Lalita is related to the moon you could do the Lalita Sahasranama um, you can also do you know chants to Saraswati um, you could do the oh yeah Asato Ma that ancient uh, mantra um, you know Asato Ma Sadgamaya you know lead us from like untruth to truth uh, you know all that that one is a classic one and that is was uh, chanted I believe before the Soma sacrifices which the moon relates to you know and the moon relates to life and what's growing and everything and so that's that's a really good mantra that um, I believe is correlated to the moon strengthening the moon um, Mars with Mars we have Skanda is a common deity Kartikeya Hanuman, the warrior god, essentially, um, from various cultures. And if you're into Hinduism, you probably know about, uh, you know, all these things I know in like Southeast Asia, like uh, Mangala and some aspects of Mars are really, really important. Supposedly, Babaji told people in South India to build temples to Kartikeya and this Mars deity for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, and it happened. But, uh, Mars, yeah, so classic Hanuman Chalisa, most of you probably already know that, um, that's a really, really well-known chant in Hinduism, but then also the Sri Ram Jai Ram one, because that's so strength, strengthening of the, the navel chakra, that's also really good for Mars, um, 
and Ram is sort of like the like the rum is the seed sound of the belly so you can also kind of like chant it to strengthen your the fire chakra which would relate to mars and then there are uh, chants to skanda but i've never uh i've not done a lot with those but i know that those are you know there's one there's a few different mantras to skanda um and so any of those would work <clears throat> for mars of course just honoring mars too with his mantras Now we come to Mercury. Um, Mercury is pretty much always seen as Vishnu, just through and through. I can't really see Mercury as anything other than Vishnu, but there's so many aspects of Vishnu. So you could worship Vishnu in so many different ways if you get bored with just one, you know? Narayana, uh, it's favorite, just the total aspect that I love, but then there's, you know, Krishna, Ram, Buddha, you know, I believe Muhammad was an avatar of Vishnu, Christ was, a Mah was an avatar of Vishnu, uh, Mitra, Zoroaster, it wasn't just these Indian ones that, you know, the Brahmins say only these people are aspects of God, no, I'm sorry, but Vishnu incarnated in every continent all over the place at different times, he was a turtle once, he was a boar once, you know, he wasn't just these classic little you know, only our religion is okay sort of beliefs. That's the opposite of Vishnu. You know, I believe Mare Baba is the most recent avatar of Vishnu, which no one really pays attention to or cares about, but in another hundred years, everyone will honor him and make try to make a religion out of him and probably lose a lot of the point of it, which was um, melting in divine love, which is what Mercury wants for us. And Lord Vishnu, you know... Um, he is, he is the aspect of God that comes down to become one with everyone. And, you know, Krishna did not want you to do extra mantras or things. He just wanted your love. He wanted you to surrender and melt in divine love. Christ wanted the same thing. All the avatars of Vishnu always want the same thing because, um, well, let's just say, like, following rules doesn't impress him. He is the rules, you know. Um, it's about surrender. So with Mercury, you can do the Hare Krishna mantra. You can do mantras of Vishnu, like Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. You know, you can do the Narayana mantras. You can chant the Vishnu Sahasranama. Um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot that you could do with with Vishnu. Um, and then Mercury also sort of does relate to Ganesh too, but I don't think is the main planet that relates to Ganesh. Um, the thing is that Ganesh is kind of like just really, to me, a symbol of the universal avatar. He's very much like Vishnu. He's the sun aspect. Shiva is the father. Ganesh is the sun aspect. And Vishnu is like, if you make the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and kind of like see the Trinity in that way, um, Brahma would probably be the father, the creator. Shiva would be the Holy Ghost. And Vishnu would be the sun who comes down and interacts, you know, and takes care of things. Um, so, um, so Ganesh is sort of like this universal sadguru or this universal avatar because he's sim he's a head. He's you know he's had his head cut off, and then Shiva replaced it with the elephant head. So him having his cut off, head cut off that's to me symbolic of the the loss of ego consciousness and he got self-realized he got to universal state but then the thing that's special about Ganesh is he was brought back down into the world and replaced with the elephant head which symbolizes universal wisdom vastness you know what I mean and so he is like the universal Sadhguru the universal master who's available for everyone um, and shows up when you've reached that point where you have the merit to have his uh, blessing and so he kind of, um, to me, that elephant head symbolizes, you know, universal mind, not having an individual mind, you know? Um, so in a way, that's Vishnu, because Vishnu, or Mercury is everywhere, you know? So in a way, that's that same omnipresent energy. But you'll also notice that he relates to Jupiter and K2 as well. Um, and in the Jaimini Sutras, he relates... Ganesh to Jupiter and Ketu and does not connect him to Mercury. But in traditional Vedic, in traditional like Hinduism, Mercury is related to Ganesh. So um, then we have, uh, yeah, then with Jupiter, Jupiter relates to Indra, um, 
who's kind of the same as Thor, you know, if you wanted to take it to another culture. Um, Jupiter also relates to Samba Shiva, Shiva accompanied by the Divine Mother. So it represents like sun and moon. So Jupiter likes to have a balanced path of uh, with some devotion, but also some action, action as well. So that kind of quality of Shiva and Parvati, Parvati, excuse me. Then there's uh, Brihaspati, the priest of and the guru of the devas, is related to Jupiter. And then, like I said, Ganesh. Ganesh is actually actually the one that I personally resonate a lot with with Jupiter. You know, um, Jupiter is another planet of vast universal wisdom. He's a planet of knowledge and writing, um, and that's where he overlaps with Mercury. And Ganesh is the scribe. You know, so we can see a lot of uh, connections there. Um, so for Jupiter. You can chant, you know, the same Om Namah Bhagavate Vasudevaya. That's a really good mantra for Jupiter as well. Um, Ganesh mantras, the Ganesha Sahasranama, you know, um, Om Gam Ganesha Namaha, all these ones. Uh, the Gayatri mantra is also good for Jupiter, it said. And um, again, Shiva mantras, there's going to be overlap here. So the Om Namah Shivaya is also good for Jupiter. Um, chants to the goddess and Shiva together, good for Jupiter. Um, any kind of chance to Brihaspati um, and so forth you know and then Venus is Lakshmi um, the main one the consort of Vishnu and then there's uh, also Sachi the wife of Indra and then like a lot of other goddesses would probably fall under Venus's domain if they don't fall under the moon or Rahu you know um, <clears throat> With Venus, you could chant, um, actually, one of the chants related to Venus is the Om Triambakam Yajamahe, you know, the, the Mahamrityanjaya mantra. That one relates to honoring Shiva. So on one hand, it's good for the sun, but it's also a chant that literally Shukra Venus was said to chant, like when Venus was a being embodied before he became the great divine planet that he is. Because in the myths, all the planets were originally people just like us that reached such a high state. They got to become planets. Um, you know, and the planets are seen as conscious divine beings, um, which scientifically cannot be disproven as of yet, because even the Earth is considered a living organism. The Earth and all planets actually fit all the biological rules it takes to classify as a living organism, just so you guys know. Um, anyways, back to, yeah, the mantra, yeah, Om Triam become that one, and then the Lalita Sahasranama is really good, and then like chants to Lakshmi in general, and then chants to various goddesses like that, um, like Om Sri Matre Nama, they kind of chant to a few different goddesses. Well, that one might work for that, and it'll also work for Rahu when I explain that one in a second. Um, yeah, so then we have Saturn. Saturn relates to Yama, the god of death and restraint, really well, and then he relates to uh, Vayu, the wind god as well and um brahma parashra actually relates them to brahma if you're curious about that i wrote a whole article about that on my website one time just google why is brahma why is saturn related to brahma and it should pop up and um then you know saturn can also be related to bhairava and then also shiva a little bit because shiva is such a destruct can be a destroying influence um so saturn you can also chant the Mahamrityanjaya, the death conquering mantra, because Saturn is the planet of death and longevity. And again, that's why Venus is the planet of rejuvenation and virya. So that's why chanting that the same mantra is good for Venus, because it's a death conquering and a rejuvenating mantra. And in the myths, supposedly this mantra was a very big part of how Venus, Shukra, was able to raise the dead with the Sanjivani Vidya or whatever. And so uh, supposedly even Venus had to be taught this mantra as part of how, you know, in the myths, Venus is said to be able to raise the dead. Um, and that to me is symbolic that love can uh, rejuvenate us. Um, so then, yeah, Saturn, Mahamrityanjaya, Jaya, also like Shanti mantra, like the Purmada one, um, and uh, the, um, oh, also Asatoma, that chant um, and then the chant the Bhairava chants and those are yeah those are all related to Saturn um, and then Rahu is related to Durga and Kali and Tamasi and also Adi Sesha so with Rahu you can chant 
the chance to Durga, you know, to the Divine Mother, the Black Mother. Um, you know, like I said, Om Sri Matre Nama, that one is really well, is really, I like that one a lot. Um, you know, like the Om Narayani, you know, these ones, um, Madurga, Chance to Kali, all these chants would be strength, strengthening for Rahu. Um, K2 is related to Ganesh, um, also to Skanda, but Ganesh is 100% K2 to me. It's just a perfect corollary. A lot of the planets, a lot of the deities don't relate just to one planet. You have to mix them kind of to get that energy, but Ganesha is just like the primary color of K2, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so um, chanting the Ganesha Sahasranama is a great one for K2. Chants to Ganesh, chants to Skanda. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much, yeah, pretty much it. You know, um, there's a lot more that we could go into here, I'm sure. K K2 is just, he's headless, you know, he's got, he's just a body without a head. So he's just like Ganesha who got his head cut off, you see? So there's that loss of ego consciousness. You know, K2 makes one a Ganaka or like a calculation, a person involved in math and calculations and astronomy and memorizing things really well. And Ganesha is like the exact same thing where the word gun literally, you know, is correlating Ganaka, Ganesha, you know. And so even in the names, the words, the sounds, they all relate back. So <clears throat> Ganesha is really great for uh, honoring K2. So if you... Oh, and then on top of this, the Rig Vedic mantras that Parashra gives are are great, um, are also really great. These are great, uh, great mantras that you can chant. I thought, hmm, I was planning on sharing those. I don't know where I left that book though. Um, in case you don't have Graha Sutras, I'm going to tell you guys that the Rig Veda for the sun, the mantra to chant is... Uh, Rig Veda 1352. That's the sutra. It says, Revolving through the darkened firmament, arousing mortal and immortal, the divine Savita travels in his golden chariot, beholding the beings. And for each one, you're supposed to chant them a certain amount of times, like 7,000 times for the sun, 11,000 for the moon, etc. There's a lot. The moons is uh, <clears throat> from the Shukla Yajur Veda, 940 to 1018. <clears throat> Mars is from Rig Veda, 844, 16. Mercury is from the Shukla Yajur Veda, 1554 to 1861. Uh, Jupiter is from the Rig Veda, 223, 15. Venus is from Shukla Yajur Veda, 1975. Saturn's is from Rig Veda, 1094. I find Saturn's really interesting. May water produce auspicious worship for our drinking, auspiciously flowing around us. Really strongly relates to Aquarius and <clears throat> a lot of the symbolism of water, Saturn, psychology, lack, nourishment. It's very interesting. Um, Rahu is Rig Veda 431. K2 is Rig Veda 163. Okay, cool. And then if you have Ganesh, or if you have Graha Sutras, this book kind of explains more in detail, like, you know, if you're going to use the Rig Veda mantras, like how much to chant them and what to do and all that, what offerings to make. Cool. So I hope you guys appreciate this and maybe now you, you know, you have a remedy that, you know, to experiment with, see how it works. Um, you know, Vedic astrology is not this 100% fatalistic thing. You can make changes in your life and really your chart is only the way it is because that's your consciousness that you've settled with, you know what I mean? But you're always here, we're here to change and develop and grow so you can shift things you don't like and you can make changes. You just have to keep using your willpower to do it. In fact, willpower is probably the best remedy, right? Okay, take care you guys.